Okay, now let's take an even closer look, and we're going to actually zoom in at the renal corpuscle, which is probably the best way to describe what we're looking at as a structure here. And so we've already pointed out the glomerulus. A lot of people like to talk about the glomerulus um, as if it's what we're looking at here, but in reality, the glomerulus is a little bit more specific than renal corpuscle. The glomerulus is actually the capillary bed itself that you can see right here. Uh, but overall, we've got this nice re renal corpuscle with our Bowman's capsule right around the outside. The Bowman's capsule actually has two different layers to it. It act, just like uh, it has a visceral and parietal layer, like we've seen in a lot of other organs. And so, a parietal layer is going to be this external layer of the Bowman's capsule, and then the visceral layer is actually going to be these yellow-colored cells that are covering the glomerulus, or actually covering the capillary bed. Um, but more specifically, if we wanted to actually name these cells, so these cells make up the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule, but more useful um, is to call these actually these podocytes, and they, these are specific cells. They literally means like foot cells or cells with feet, and these cells are really uh, still yet to be fully understood, but their, their outcome is that they, they modify how much or uh, it modifies the filtration of the plasma that actually comes out of the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule or into actually the capsular space, which is another term you need to know. And that's actually just the open space within here. So often you'll talk about, like I just said, filtering into the Bowman's capsule, which makes sense. But even more specifically, you talk about the capsular space. Um, and it can become important when you talk about changes of the pressure of the fluid that exists within the capsular space. Uh, down here at number four, this is our proximal convoluted tubule, really, really large cells here, a lar lot of microvilli. Um, let's see what else. And the, oh, the difference between each side of the glomerulus, these are showing the podocytes. These are with the podocytes removed. So this is kind of what a normal capillary bed would look like. And here's with our fancy podocytes on them. Uh, then you've got the afferent and efferent arterioles. And so the afferent arteriole is the one that's coming into the glomerulus, and the efferent is the one leaving, going off to those paratubular capillaries. Um, one of the easy ways to figure out which one's efferent and afferent um, is actually to look for this cluster of modified smooth muscle cells. These are called the juxtaglomerular cells, or often called the JG cells. And this is a smooth muscle that controls the pressure and the flow of blood going through the glomerulus. Really, really important function here. Um, but anatomically, they're just the JG cells, or juxtaglomerular. 12A is actually these collections of this collection of cells. And this is the distal convoluted tubule. That's what this tube is. So the filtrate has come all the way out, gone through the loop of Henle, and all the way back around to the distal convoluted tubule. And there's specialized columnar epithelial cells here that are called the macula densa. They're collectively called the macula densa. Just this border, they're touching up kind of against the juxta sorry, the juxta glomerular uh, cells right here. So the macula densa is really important for, for monitoring the osmotic concentration of the distal convoluted tubule. And these two things kind of work together, and when you go over the physiology of the renin-angiotensin system and aldosterone function, uh, you'll become really familiar with these as important mechanisms. But anatomically, they're sitting right next to each other here. And collectively, this is called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. So the juxtaglomerular apparatus is made of the macula densa cells and the juxtaglomerular cells. Let's make sure I haven't skipped anything. Looking pretty good. Not a whole lot on this model. Really, really nice one, though. It shows you uh, a lot of the details that are going on within uh, the actual renal corpuscle here.